Dharma. My sister was Dharma. Those guys are crazy too. Right? And she was one of the early women at Dharma that was still a freaking boys zoo up there. It's a zoo still, but it's yeah, but a freaking party. It, it, was a, it was a rich boys zoo up there. So. It's, yeah, and it's still that way, but now it's rich boys and girls. Mm-hmm, but, mm-hmm. um, They used to bust them in, like you did. Oh, yeah. And even though they had women on campus, if I went to a fraternity party, you know, and I was like, I was shocked. And I had been to Oregon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what they call it, them, too. <laughs> I'm like, really? What? <laughs> I was like, good oh, boy. I can't believe it. I can't see anything anymore. See, read my, my phone. Are you getting old? I have It's ridiculous. It happened like wicked fast too. I still don't so, need glasses to read. I do just to read. I can't. I can't like like right here. I can't read my phone. Yeah, it's true. I yeah. can't. I mean, it's small font, but I still I can't. Mm. I mean, it's fat. I see you have five vocals, but what else are you working out of these kids? Kind of about. So, so yeah. you don't yeah, need to read. I mean, I'm full of coming back. I'm just in the corporate office now. I just do this and it plugs right in. So which is right off of it. My daughter just see something's wrong with on a bus. Oh, okay, so she landed. She landed. Good. Uh, good. You're not, you know, uh, oh, I know why. I'm not, I don't know why I was so we'll not late. getting the current agenda. And Jeffrey said back up to the main in, in wall that, all the way down in Massachusetts. Listed. Oh, man. And Kevin um, says, well, it feels like me. it when you're stuck in traffic on Route 1 Fox. Yeah, I see Jimmy that line. Is he famous or is he just giving her a hand? I don't know. I know when I uh, went to grad school at BC, we used to. Can you up? I'm going to be smart, I guess. I'm going to your account. On Friday, we got out of class. It's Friday at 3 or 3 30. Oh, I used to do that, Kim. So all the time. we finally yeah. decided we'd go out and have a drink and eat and whatever, yeah. and then come up because right, then, right. Oh, you, just you get home at the same time. You get home at about the same right. time. Right. So. I lived in Enfield, Connecticut for about three years. After after school, and uh, I used to do the same thing. I drive down, I drive drive down to Connecticut on Sunday, and I drive back on Friday. And uh, in the summertime, it was just brutal, oh, brutal. Oh, yeah. brutal. Yeah, I know. That Lowell Lawrence connector, they still have done nothing for it. It like goes from like eight oh, lanes down to two, oh, yeah. and then it widens back oh, up, yeah. and it's like there's no purpose for it whatsoever. Oh, no. yeah. Every Friday afternoon, Molly used to come when she was by herself uh, up. <coughs> Northampton, and she get in that low off oh. stretch and, and Friday afternoon at 4 o'clock. No. 4.30. Brutal. 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 No. No, no. Uh, no. not interested in that, thank you. When's she, when's she doing? You don't feel like because she's stuck in traffic, right? Well, I could text her, but she's, yeah, she's doing it at 6.45, but... Where? Logan? No, Concord. She <coughs> she landed in Logan before. Where did she take in a bus? Yeah, not from Chicago. She flies from Chicago to Logan. So Southwest. You know, I don't know this way. I'm not no. sure about old parents but you know, I I pick them up. I was gonna say, I I, I would be in a world of hurt if I didn't pick them up, or at least off. What? Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Mom, the least you can do is pick them up. <laughs> Tough love. Take the damn bus. Tough love. I'm not driving to Boston to pick you up. It actually is so much Faster more convenient. Than than me, yeah. You could have at least sent like mermaid transportation right. and had a direct or something. A right? limo. Mary Kirsch came home today. And yeah, she the mermaid transportation. And we just picked her up right outside the terminal. I don't know how they do it, but the bus can drive here faster than I can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's because they're crazy. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and who's going to cut a bus off, right? <laughs> That's true. They can cut everyone off when you get down into the into. I think they also know the. They do the flow, right? Yeah, they do. Which makes it very cool. Very, very, very cool. How long is your home for? Ten days. Oh, wonderful! I know. I told her she has to come see you guys here at Town Hall. Tony will put her to work. Well, I know. (laughs) Tony said she wanted her money. That's a notion volunteer. We like volunteers. Pick these school volunteers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She gets bored all they call Cody to see if there's anything. Yeah, I wonder if there's anything. Do. That, she used uh, to work in the, t- in the yeah, office, she, you know. Oh. She would. Because yeah, I know we're back up. In college. And she was at the Chicago for how many summers? Two summers? At least two. And through some breaks, too, as I recall. Yeah. Yep. 
because uh, Rose Kirsch was asking Molly's granddaughter home from Holy Cross today and yeah. was asking if there was any part, part, part time work. <laughs> Tom, do we have uh, official openings on shelter now? Is it official to two resignations? Yeah, or is it the official resignation? I'm doing last voting on the really? right? With yeah. this we're we're the only two we're, we're, we have, we're yeah, starting right. to call this the first. jeans right. end of the That's right. We're the only two in the dress code. Yeah, I think they're simply punching. They should not do anything but I started clamor out my backyard today. Really? First time. Yep. It was nice. Yeah. Can't you guys have forgotten? Yeah, they're, right. they're putting their uh, the left wants to put uh, aquaculture for you. Yeah. 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 yeah, I went to the meeting. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're in front of it. The new AV? bridge though, right? What was that? No, it's not. Uh, okay. it's, no. it's a just a, you know how, once you go by Harman's Island, the, the thing takes a big sweeping turn to the right. It's on that. Oh, you watched last night? On the I have never actually seen one. It is The Cape side is all spray. All so you have, he, the guy, gentlemen, the two guys who were doing it said they will access the, yeah. their stuff exclusively well, from the shelf. You know, the robber there, the guy, one of the guys who was making the presentation is head of the shellfish commission. Oh, what are you guys doing? Yeah. That, that poses another interesting question to some people. Yeah. <laughs> but, Robert Willett? Yeah. See, this is why I don't want to come early. Or just sit around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody, nobody ever talks to me. Why? Right? <laughs> well, we're coming up on. Yeah, I am. Hey, Bill. You don't want to let them know that we're going for now. Yes. Okay. Let's see what we got. Now. Mm -hmm. we'll now. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Scarborough Town Council uh, December 20, 2017 regular meeting. Uh, call the meeting to order, and if you would join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, roll call. Councilor Bayvine. Present. Councilor Rowan. Here. Councilor Foley. Here. Councilor Katarina. Here. Councilor Hayes. Here. Councilor Chiazzo. Here. Chairman Dunneman. Here. Uh, order number 17-121, act on the request for an executive session pursuant to Title I MRSA uh, Section 405, Subsection 6E, in consultation with legal counsel regarding a legal matter pertaining to pending litigation related to the Higgins Beach Pine Point Prouts Neck Tax Abatement Appeals. Uh, and do you want to make any comments uh, about this, or are we all set? No, I think everything's contained within the uh, the order title itself. Uh, legal counsel is waiting for you in the uh, in my conference room. We're uh, we had a, d a decision a couple of weeks ago uh, that uh, we're going to confer with counsel on. Uh, and we'll probably be gone for about an hour. The meeting reconvenes at 7. Sure. So, uh, further discussion? None? All so, in favor? So, so, so moved. Move. Move. Second. So move. Second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. Unanimous. Thank you.
past year or so, I've had to deal with such issues as sexual harassment by a digger, being verbally assaulted with my 16-year-old grandson present by another digger at a very busy store, and I don't need that. I'm not crying. I'm a big boy. I'll take care of myself, but I don't need that. The job doesn't pay enough. I'm just a volunteer to help. Please feel free to contact me if you've got any questions. If you would like to talk to Peter Hayes, I sent him a very detailed message this summer, an email, public information. He's welcome to share it. And if you have an interest in what happened to some of the things in this town last year, like the surveys that you wanted, talk to him about it. I'm not going to bore you with the details tonight. I have two things I asked this council to do, the new council, for this new year. One, is please live up to the standards that this council sat and signed the paperwork for for the working waterfront down there at the co-op. Because this town has not lived up to your standards and your covenant. And it's been eight years now. That's a shame. That's truly a shame. That's a working waterfront for the working fishermen in this town. And it's being abused. And I would like to have the council ordinance committee work on the ordinance for the shellfish committee. I do not believe. I tried. They cannot fix it. And this shellfish committee in this town needs to move to the 21st century and get out of its antiquated ordinance that it lives under. Thank you. Thank you, David, and thank you for your service. Merry Christmas. Also. Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> Auntie Jessica. Uh, anyone else who would like to uh, make a public comment? Seeing no one. Close the public comment period. Order number, let's see, uh, uh, minutes of December 6, 2017. I'll accept a motion. So moved. Second. Any uh, comments or corrections? Seeing none, all in favor? Unanimous, thank you. Adjustments to the agenda, I don't believe there are any. No. Items as be signed are the treasurer's warrants, which I'll do later. Uh, <coughs> order number 17-122 at the 7 p.m. public hearing in action on the following applicants who have applied for renewal of their manufactured housing communities license. Uh, one, Crystal Springs Manufactured Housing Community, uh, Donna Alexander on U.S. Route 22. Uh, Pinecrest Manufactured Housing Community, Teresa DeFoss. Uh, route uh, uh, 126 U.S. Route 1 and Hillcrest Manufactured Housing 126 U.S. Route 1. I'd ask for the town clerk to give us a report on any issues associated with it. There are none. There were, the Crystal Springs did have an issue, but it has been taken care of. This yeah. past week it's been taken care of, so they're all in compliance. Good. Uh, public comment on, uh, uh, on this uh, order. <coughs> See, I'm going to close the public hearing. Uh, accept the motion. Who approval of order number 17-122? Second. Second. Discussion? Chris? Um, yeah, I appreciate the clerk's comment. I know um, we saw the email from Brian uh, Longstaff for code enforcement. Um, there was a, I think there was a question about uh, taxes or were they current for? They, they, they are current. current. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 Thank Thank you. Brought current. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Other questions, comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Thank you, that's unanimous. Old Business, Order 17-111, second reading on the proposed amendments to Chapter 311, the Town of Scarborough schedule of fees. This is a matter that came through the uh, Ordinance Committee. Uh, it had uh, uh, received Ordinance Committee attention. Uh, town Clerk would, wanted a resolution by the spring. Uh, so that uh, when uh, these various licenses were being sold, we'd have our current uh, fee schedule. Uh, the goal of the Ordinance Committee had consistently been uh, really fairness for Scarborough taxpayers. This, uh, the changes were largely designed to be supportive of Scarborough taxpayers uh, and to try to have the fees carry 
uh, more the cost of the services that are associated. So with that uh, introduction, I'll ask if there is any public comment. Seeing none, close that. I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. Uh, discussion? I can put forward uh, uh, two amendments. I'll do them separately so that we can just separate those questions. Uh, the, f the first is to increase the fee schedule for RVs from $35 to $45. Uh, and that, that is in the form of a motion to amend. Second. Uh, discussion, I'll uh, say that the whole objective here was uh, in the area of beach fees was to get us more into the center, middle, uh, of where many communities are. I think the $15 daily fee is still low, but uh, I think uh, it's, uh, it's progress. Uh, and uh, uh, and the other fees are being adjusted accordingly. The only one that we're asking for an adjustment uh, is from 35 to 45, uh, so as to keep pace with the fact that we're now up to $15 for the vehicle fee. Uh, any other ordinance committee comment? Be happy to look to. I. I yeah, I remember that we were we were looking at it. I think that yeah, I agree that that, that it was an oversight in, on the committee to not have uh, put that forth. Other comments? Uh, ready to vote? This is a vote on the motion to amend to the schedule to place the RV charge at forty-five dollars. All in favor? Opposed? Six to one. Confirmed. The second motion is uh, to extend the uh, discounted parking fee. There is a uh, discounting of parking fees uh, uh, at our three principal public beach parking lots. That is uh, a charge of $5 and it runs from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, the motion to amend would be to change that from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, I'll present that as a motion. Second. Uh, discussion. The reason uh, that I'm suggesting this is because there is a substantial amount of traffic that comes in in the five to six o'clock period of time during the summer, and I think, in fairness to the taxpayers of the town of Scarborough, we want to be able to have everybody who enjoys and benefits from the beach and all the improvements that the town has made participate in. Uh, some payment, even if it's not a lot. Uh, at least it's something. So that's the rationale. Other comments? Councilor Caterina. Uh, at, uh, Chairman Donovan, could you please remind the community um, of the timing of these fees? Are these year-round? Are they just seasonal? Yes, this is a, a seasonal charge. There is no charge other than during the summer, <coughs> uh, the summer hours. And I believe uh, it is somewhat dependent upon staffing, but they usually get going around uh, uh, Memorial Day uh, and finish uh, between Labor Day or September 15th. Councilor Kazo. Um, having said that, I know we're going to a, a potentially a new meter type of system. Um, I assume the enforcement dates would stay the same even though we're not dependent on staff. Are we still going to do a seasonal charge only or is there uh, with, with the installation of the meters if that would change? The, uh, uh, the ordinance committee did not address changing the dates. Okay. Will? Uh, we, we did, so we didn't address changing the dates. I do believe that we don't, uh, there still needs to be staff nearby. These, these meters are, still need some form of monitoring and okay. maintenance. The uh, system that uh, Todd Souza, our new uh, community services director, uh, has spoken about uh, may be to defer uh, the implementation of a metered system uh, simply because it's still necessary to have individuals there to staff it. Uh, and so uh, I think there's probably going to be some delay or it had originally <coughs> been targeted for Higgins Beach. I don't think that's where 
Todd Sousa is right at the moment. I think he's thinking more uh, Heard Park. Yeah, and I just wanted to make sure that we, we didn't, people weren't thinking that we were moving to charging full time and that we were still going to honor the seasonal pass. <coughs> yeah. 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 yeah, seasonal pass yeah. Uh, <coughs> for residents uh, <coughs> is $40 seniors free. <coughs> Scarborough seniors. No, yeah, I think the time thing. We weren't going to yeah. just charge year round just because we put automated no. B meters in, so that we were going to. No, the fact that we have that time. meters. Yeah. The only meters in town are on Bayview Avenue, and those are uh, seasonal in the same time. <coughs> Other comments? Councilor okay. Katerina. Um, yeah, Mr. Chair, if you could also uh, remind people about senior citizens and how that works and why there's no charge, correct, for senior citizens? That's citizen? correct. The, uh, uh, all seniors, 65 and older, are 62, 62, yeah, 62 uh, and older are eligible for a free beach pass to gain access to any of our public beaches. Will that work with the meters? Uh, yes. If, if and when we? Yes. Okay. Can you we'll clarify that it's resident? Mm -hmm. it's, and it, is, it is a resident Scarborough taxpayer only. Okay, thank you. And I just want to clarify, we did have a discussion about, about dates and the season, but I, it's not part of this. Um, okay. Correct. Some of the week before. Councilor, they might. So I, I wanted to ask around the timing of these changes, because generally uh, fee schedules are approved as part of a budgetary process, and this is off cycle. So um, I would hope that uh, we've looked at these and probably would not um, have to engage in a conversation of increasing any fees of the next, next budget cycle. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. That, that, Thank you. That this is going to cover it uh, and will allow us to learn, I think, what we need to know about uh, demand, uh, staffing, and then allow the 2018-19 budget to address any changes in the fee schedule. <coughs> other comments or questions? There may be other fee changes, but certainly not beach parking related. Right. That's correct. I understand that part. Same. Council Rowan. So uh, my recollection is the, the motion on the floor right now is the uh, change in 5 to 6 p.m. Is that? That's correct. This is a motion to amend the main motion. Does the, does the daily rate currently go until 6 p.m.? Or we, I mean. If daily want, rate goes to 5 p.m. Currently. Uh, uh, and it's uh, a discounted rate from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And this is merely extending it from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. <coughs> just because of demand. Yep, got it. Okay, you're, mo you're voting on the motion to amend. All in favor? <coughs> Opposed? Five to two. Uh, Councilor Foley and Hayes. Uh, back to the main motion as amended discussion. Councilor Hayes. I'd, I'd like to introduce a different motion. You go right, go right ahead. I would, <clears throat> and, and kind of pick it up, it's going to be my comment, and I think Councilor Babine brought it up. I, my motion is to table this until we do have the budget conversation. This has really always been part of the budget deliberations that go through the finance committee. Um, you know, when I look at, so my motion is we table this and I can get into a discussion on why. A, a motion to table is a non-debatable motion. Uh, all in favor? You haven't had a second. Um, I'll second it. For thank purposes. you. Okay. Uh, all, all in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Uh, you're voting on the main motion as amended twice. Uh, any further discussion, comment? I'd like, to, I'd like to introduce the second motion that we suspend the, the morning fee from 5.30 to 9 for $5. Do I hear a second? Se second that for purposes of discussion. Thank you. Uh, discussion, Councilor Hayes. Yeah, the reason I do that is, is one, as, as I look at this, and the reason I suggest is that this should be part of the budget process. One of the stated reasons for doing this was to get additional revenue, but actually our parking revenues have generated about $100,000 a year in surplus revenue over expenses. So the current fee schedule <coughs> are more than covering the operational costs of the beaches. Um, I, I, think, I think we are going to be faced some really tough choices. Um, during the budget season. I think we need to put everything into the hopper and take a look at choices our community wants to make. Um, 
I believe that this, and again, every, we have, our learning is every time we do something in the beach communities, it creates two sides of the equation. I've heard a lot of pushback on the morning um, fee schedule. A lot of people, the perception is that's really targeting some of the surfers that like to go down there at the beach. I think that should be a consideration, so that is part of my thought process for the morning, I think. And what I didn't get clarity on, and I guess I'd like to get clarity on, what is our net revenue we expect from the 5.30 to 7.30 slot? I think it's probably going to cost us as much to collect the parking fee as it is that we're going to collect. So I'm not quite sure what we gain by doing this. Other comments? Councilor? Councilor Gaines? Deferred, gentlemen. <clears throat> yeah, so if I could, um, you know, I, 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 I can understand and empathize with that situation, however, I think we have an obligation to maximize the assets in this town, uh, and I think the $5 fee in the morning is a non-discriminatory fee because it doesn't, it's not targeting a specific group. It's also not uh, preventing a specific group or allowing a specific group. It's $5 whether you're a resident or not unless you're a parking pass. So I, 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 I don't necessarily buy the argument that it's targeting an individual group. There may be, uh, you know, the tides come three times a three times a day, they're not regulated to just in the morning before uh, 9 a.m. So I, I think, uh, you know, in terms of the financial impact, I still think um, we're doing quite well in terms of keeping our fees low for the area and for the region. It's an asset, and I think we do need to maximize the return on that. Um, so I would support the motion. Councilor Beba. Um, so to the specific fee, I think that our fees, are, as the councilor said, is comparable if not better than our neighboring communities that are in the similar situation. I did want to mention that I actually believe that by having this conversation, um, in essence, four months, five months in advance of the budget is actually a better process than having to wait and then determine what those fees are because now we are definitely more transparent so long as we adhere to the, you know, the, um, the assumption that we will not uh, tinker with these fees through the budgetary process. So um, I'm very comfortable in moving this forward and, you know, out of respect to Councilor Hayes, that is the reason why I did not vote for the tabling motion because I think more information now regarding budget implications is better, especially if they're held constant. Um, I th think I have a, a, I don't know, slightly different uh, view than has been offered so far and in that I, it's not so much the fees themselves that I oppose um, because we already, we're already charging and we are doing well in terms of covering our costs there but the increase in hours here and then adding, it feels like every year the, we keep chipping away. And I know it might seem nominal to some people, a dollar or three dollars here. For me, if I have to pay, that's still an access issue and it feels like we're chipping away constantly at our beach access. And so that, that's really more on the, the core of why I'm not going to support it. Um, I do appreciate the reasoning and, and the work that went into it. I, was, I had listened to the conversations of ordinance and I think you were very thoughtful and mindful in those conversations. I just have a different view and that sometimes that happens. Councilor Rowan, thank you. I just wanted to address two, two issues. Or one was uh, timing. Um, so this was really brought forward from the aspect of we wanted to make a change to the season's pass for next year. We needed to do it soon so that, it, so that when we started selling the season's pass in the spring, um, the, the change would be in effect. Um, and to clarify, we're not uh, increasing the resident season pass that's um, holding steady, but when we looked at the surrounding communities for the non-resident season passes, we were well under. Um, and so we were just trying to bring that in line. Um, uh, the daily rate, when we talked about the increase there, again, driven by the fact that um, we had increased the season pass rate for the non-residents, um, nobody could recall when it was last changed. I mean, it's been $10 for years. Um, and so we're really just keeping up with inflation. Uh, my own sense is it's a fairness issue. Uh, uh, there's literally thousands of Scarborough residents who do not go to the beach. Uh, therefore, to the greatest extent possible, we should ask those people who participate in enjoying this amenity to contribute. So that, that's my own thought. Any other comments? Seeing none, all in. we are voting on the morning fee. Morning fee. <laughs> Uh, all in favor. Oh, well, oh, sorry, so we clear, clear, clear. I thought you were back on the suspension list. of the morning fees, correct? Yeah, suspension to the to no. to the to the Right, right. It's to Peter's suspend suspend the the morning fee. To suspend. Oh, that's right. we're dealing we're dealing with Peter's motion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
just for clarification, Peter's <coughs> motion is to suspend the morning fees. Suspend the morning fees, 5:30 to 9 a.m. Five dollar charge. All in favor? Opposed? Two to five. Councilor Hayes and Councilor Foley uh, in favor. Mm -hmm. uh, we're back to the main motion. Uh, any further discussion? Ready to vote? All in favor? Opposed? Uh, five to two. Councilor Hayes and Foley are voting again. Thank you, everyone. <coughs> Uh, order number 17-112, second reading on the pros proposed amendments to Chapter 601, the Town of Scarborough Traffic Ordinance, Section 25A, Parking Restrictions. Uh, this is a matter that uh, is uh, on for <coughs> second reading. Um, uh, at first reading, uh, it was uh, the police department's recommendation that became the ordinance committee's recommendation uh, was to uh, uh, eliminate parking uh, in the vicinity of the Nonsuch Brewery restaurant on both sides of the street that was amended to uh, uh, have parking just uh, restricted, uh, no parking on the restaurant side, parking still allowed on the other side, uh, and that's where we are here at second reading. Uh, anyone in the audience who would like to address this matter, please proceed to the podium. Seeing none, uh, public comment uh, is finished. I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. Uh, uh, discussion. Uh, are there any amendments to be made? Councilor Katarina. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I have an amendment um, to Section 25, Sub A, Sub, I guess that's an I. Number 18, um, to insert after no parking on the north side of Gorham Road from 183 Gorham Road to the intersection of Gorham Road and Spring Street at number 209, insert. And on the south side of Gorham Road from the westerly end of the stockade fence fronting on 200 Gorham Road easterly for a distance of 100 yards. Uh, the reason I introduce that is um, I'm, I am familiar with that property um, at 200 Gorham Road. I know that the owner there had a car, someone rear-ended her at some point during, I don't know if that's the opening or when, but related to the, the pub. Uh, I know the sight lines of coming out of her driveway are difficult uh, at best, uh, and to have cars parked you know, within that vicinity of her house would make it very difficult for them. So in the interest of fairness, it is the only house over there. Uh, I have uh, asked that this be amended. Thank you for that introduction. May I have a second to the motion? Second. Uh, discussion. Councilor Gadsden. So um, in theory, I can appreciate that motion and could support it. However, I'm unclear of the frontage of that. Uh, residency to the road. Um, I'm not a fan of putting in 100 yards as an arbitrary number. I would, uh, if their frontage is 100 yards, I'm, I'm accept, I can accept that, but I don't believe it is. So um, if 100 yards to me is excessive, I can totally see uh, if the council is willing to make a friendly uh, uh, am uh, uh, amendment to restrict it to the property lines uh, or their frontage specifically, I would be more than happy to support that. But I think 100 yards is a little bit excessive because that's that's a that's quite a bit of distance on there, and I think that kind of defeats the purpose of the of the compromise we we're trying to make. Mm -hmm. Other comments, Councilor Rowan. Yeah. So uh, if I'm understanding correctly, so I'm getting a little turned around, but the the um, if I'm driving toward Oak Hill from Eight Corners, the no parking section would start at the corner of the stocking fence. Correct. Presumably that's that's the property line, um, and that's to protect them when they're looking left to make a right hand turn, uh, and then. Uh, they have their the front of their lot, and then the road kind of curves down to the right a little bit, um, and so the idea would be that the 100 yards would cover them on the right side of the road, so that they could look to the right, so they can make a left turn with the with the oncoming yeah. traffic. Is that correct? Okay, thank you. Other comments? Yeah, a little bit of confusion. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I I will comment on the 100 yards of. Uh, I suggested to Councilor Katerina when she was uh, uh, preparing the uh, 
uh, amendment that 100 yards would be appropriate because I had driven the road and after the property, I don't know where the exact property line is for 200 uh, uh, Gorm Road, but uh, the road does start to curve and the shoulder disappears. Uh, and so I thought that it would be prudent for safety purposes to put it at 100 yards and that was how that came to be. Mm -hmm. Councilor Casey. So I appreciate the intent, I, I honestly do, and I think safety is foremost. However, we do have engineers with traffic studies and I would like to see that on the map to see exactly what that delineation is. Because uh, again, I, my concern is that uh, I, I get the concept and I get the gist of it. Mm -hmm. I just don't know where 100 yards locks off on that road. I don't, I'd like to see the aerial or the map and say it's from here to here so it's a little bit more clear. Councilor Gettering. Uh, I'm, I, I sold this property to the people who live there. Um, I, the, their frontage is about 150 to 200 feet. Um, Which is not yours. No, I know that. Right. I know that. So, don't think. so anyway, I would be willing to reduce the 100 yards to 50 yards in the interest of, uh, I think it would still cover some of the sight line. Uh, issues there, but um, I'd be willing to amend my amendment to 50 yards. <coughs> if, if I could, 50 yards is 150 feet, right? So yeah, approximately. So, so we could do the property line and do. That know, would and then we'll be, cover we'll the be property covered. line. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, who seconded the motion? Would I'll you, withdraw my second. Would you withdraw the second? Would you like to re restate the? Restate my amendment. Amendment, please. Absolutely. Um, without all the other. Probably group the middle, starting with uh, at number 209 and starting and on the south side of Gorham Road from the westerly end of the stockade fence fronting on 200 Gorham Road mm -hmm. easterly for a distance of 50 yards. Do I have a second? Well, I'll second so we can discuss. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, discussion on the motion to amend. Is, is that what you were looking for? My, my interpretation was you were looking for just in front of the property, of the, the property I, lines, which could be delineated by the stockade fence. Yes, I, that's what originally I was looking for, but I'm, I'm willing to concede the point. I mean, I think it's, I get the intent. I don't want to argue over a foot or two. So I, 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 I concede the point. I think it's, it's, it's a good compromise. So Other comments? Other, um, I, I mean, I, I appreciate the fact that Council Kettering is looking out for this particular resident. I think it makes sense in this case, and I think in these situations, we do have to do it a case by case. I always worry about making, uh, you know, decisions for one particular resident because then, you know, if we have 20,000 people who all have some special exception for something in front of their house and they all come to us, we would be in a bit of a pickle. So I think as new restaurants, new, you know, development continues, uh, you know, just constantly making sure we're really scrubbing that, being super thorough and trying to be proactive and think of those things in advance. I know in this case we didn't know. And again, it's a, uh, you know, a sideline of, of your success, which is a good thing. So I will support it, but okay, just you. with that concern. Councilor Rose. Great. Um, so the justification we gave for uh, not allowing parking on the north side was the sight lines of the neighbors. Um, and so I think this is a really good solution to, to address the need of that one particular resident. So I think we're being consistent there. Um, I think it also preserves um, several hundred yards. Um, I'll turn it around again. West <laughs> on Gorham Road um, mm -hmm. on, in front of the restaurant where there is parking, um, which actually was plowed really nicely. So now it looks like you could get some cars off the, off the road there for several cars at least. Um, I, I initially I had um, been, when this came up in ordinance, I was really concerned about making rash decisions. We'd heard from staff around the recommendation to not allow parking there at all. Um, and uh, so we put a, a, a date at the end of it um, to say have this thing expire uh, in April. And one of the reasons to do that was to allow committees like the Transportation Committee to weigh in. Um, the Transportation, and they have done so. Um, and so um, I would certainly be, be comfortable now that they've come back by taking out the, the expiration, um, the uh, the committee, looking at the, the memo that um, uh, Ms. Blanchett wrote up, was, uh, was recommending uh, lighting, street lighting, which is one of the things that um, the staff was concerned about. Um, they recommended um, some signs to watch for pedestrians. Um, and they were also saying that um, they really, when we get to that phase of the Gorham Road, 
is that we really want to be cognizant of the fact that uh, we need some traffic comments. So I think I support it, and I would support an amendment that would remove the um, the end date. And I will take that up as soon as we vote on the motion to amend that's on the table. Any further comments on that, Chris? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can comment to that. I was on the tr I was in the meeting of the transportation, but I think that might be more relevant to the main motion. So I, I will certainly address Councilor Rowan's uh, questions and concerns with the, with the main motion. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Other comments on the motion to amend, Councilor Bayby. Um, <clears throat> So um, I'm actually not going to vote in favor of this particular motion, but I'm going to reserve my comments to the main motion because it's actually goes to the bigger picture of this issue and what I consider an impractical precedent that it's setting. So I'll wait until that main motion conversation. Thank you. Other comments? Councilor Katarina. Um, just to make clear, uh, for people who think that I'm showing favoritism towards one particular party here, they never approached me on this. They never talked to me about mm -hmm. this. Um, I I drive by there multiple times a day because uh, I live down beyond, so I'm driving pat, past that uh, pub um, several times a day. Um, I just feel that where it is the only house in that area, that for safety reasons, again, I happen to know what it's like to drive out of that driveway and whatever, that... Um, something needs to be done so there's not parking right there because I know tonight when I went by there there were cars parked all along you know on both sides which is fabulous that they're doing such a great business there and I, and I applaud them um, but there were cars parked up on the stockade fence right up to where their driveway is that it would be very difficult for someone to pull out of that driveway so that's that's the reason just to allay any concerns that I'm trying to cherry pick here yeah. so the comments the on the motion to end Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? That's two. Uh, and I'll recognize Council Rowan for a motion to amend. Yeah, thank you. I, I got on a roll there, so I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I would propose an amendment that we remove the temporary restriction, uh, temporary nature. Second. Discussion? I think I made my case quite up. <laughs> <laughs> Council Hayes and then Council Gatorade. Yeah, Councilman, I guess I'd, I'd like to understand a little bit more what, um, a little bit more detail on why you would want to permanently remove the restrictions. So, so my concern or, or when we, when we, keep it in place. thank you, I'm sorry. No, the, your, your motion is to keep the restriction in place permanently, permanently you know, I'm just curious yes. about why. So in, in the original language that came out of Ordinance Committee, we had put in place an end date of April 1st, 2018. Mm -hmm. Uh, the idea being that it would cover us for the winter season because one of the large concerns that had come from staff was the concerns about plowing. Snow. Yeah. Uh, snow, I don't, I don't think we've addressed that. I don't think the snow ban is sufficient for that, but I, I do think that, uh, um, that other things that we were concerned about were sight lines, people crossing the street, um, the, the fact that it's really dark, um, and, um, um, and so I, I had suggested that we were, we were potentially harming, you know, that we need to put something in place quickly, but that, um, or get something in motion so that we could have it in place, but, but because we knew that we were probably making a decision that we wanted to revisit quickly, that we would have an end date on it. Um, because the Transportation Committee has weighed in, um, and, um, um, and they have much more expertise, and I'm, I'm deferring to it, and then we also have the fact that the Gorham Road um, uh, project is coming along, and then we also have in, in our purview that we can we can revisit this at any time. Mm -hmm. um, but the April 1st date was arbitrary, and I, I kind of feel like we've come we've addressed a lot of the concerns that I was concerned about when I put the date, when I suggested that we put the date on there in the first place, coming out of ordinance. Other other discussion. Does that, does that clarify? Any other discussion? Yeah, I, th I think that it will it will permit us uh, to, and I think we're all committed to studying the public safety through the appropriate channels, town engineer, planning, planning department, et cetera, uh, DPW, uh, uh, as the winter goes on. So that uh, if it's necessary to do something else, we will do something uh, else. But if it's determined that the situation is uh, a reasonable resolution until uh, the whole Gorm Road phase comes along, and three, four, five years, then we wouldn't have to take further action. Otherwise, we would have to take further action if it is extinguished as of April 1st. So that's, that's why I'll support this. Any other discussion around this issue? 
Uh, voting on the uh, motion to amend. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Uh, main motion. Any other amendments? Uh, general discussion. Councilor Kazo. So um, I can. Uh, I did participate, as I said, in the transportation committee discussion. It was a very robust discussion. Um, a lot of the uh, concerns of ordinance were, were taken up. Um, we didn't necessarily discuss the permanency of it because the intent is the fact that uh, we are. This is going to be part of a of a new roadworks project coming through uh, in a few years. So the thought is that this is a temporary fix. Um, whatever we come up with until we can make design considerations to, to make it an idealistic uh, roadway um, with complete streets and all of the other design features and implications that we need to, to, to look at. Um, I will point out that um, one thing that we did discuss very in-depthly uh, in at the Transportation Committee is the fact that they are in a town village center zone and that's a very unique and specific zone and we talked a lot about the intent of what we want that zone to encourage, what kind of development we want to encourage there, and why we zoned it that way. And the discussion really centered around pedestrian friendly, uh, more of a village center, uh, adequate parking, adequate access, not so much a thoroughfare. So I think um, the Transportation Committee kind of came to this consensus as an agreement that we can um, I, think, I think Jay Chase put it perfectly together where we've almost like development's kind of getting ahead of the zoning a little bit so we've, they've, they're, they're, they're early to the game. We haven't had a chance to really make the infrastructure changes to that zone yet to make it ideally the way we want it to look but we've already taken those steps with the, with the, with the town village center zone. So I think this is a good compromise. Um, I, I also want to point out we're not authorizing parking. It's not like Pine Point where we're saying there's seven designated spots there. We're just not restricting it right now. So when we started talking about <coughs> adequate crosswalks and adequate lighting and things like that, um, you know, I think those are design features that will come into play during the design phase of the Gorham Road extension. Um, we also talked about do we, um, do we want to make uh, fixes, understanding now what's going on and what the character is and how we're going to be utilizing it, do we want to make temporary fixes just as a precaution? And I think that's what the Transportation Committee came down on. I think the lighting, uh, and, and Chairman Donna and I spoke about this, I think the lighting and the signage is important. It was important for the Transportation Committee, but I think it's an administrative function. I don't think it necessarily needs to be put into the amendment itself or into the ordinance itself. Um, I think staff is aware of what our intention is and obviously safety being the concern, transportation and, and uh, the transportation engineer and public works will be evaluating the overall area for street light, LED street light, application or implementation and that will be part of their review uh, and certainly putting signage up of course is at the discretion of public works and, and public safety as well. So I think I think those will be accommodated. I have every uh, every confidence that staff will take those considerations into play and, 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 and come up with that. Um, and again I, I really want to emphasize this is a short term solution, right? So we're trying to kind of strike that balance. It's not the perfect solution of course um, but we, we don't want to inhibit business but we don't want to uh, you know, make an unsafe situation. So I really think that we put a lot of time and energy into crafting this compromise. I think it's a good one. Um, I think it will buy <coughs> transportation time and, and staff time to really look at the, the design moving forward in accordance with complete streets and the zoning and everything else. So uh, I hope we do support this motion and I, I certainly will be supporting it. Other, other comments? Councilor Rowan. Um, in, in the letter, um, the since the committee voted uh, four to two, I'm wondering if uh, Councilor Chiazza could comment about the nature of the two dissenting votes, about whether they were kind of, if they articulated any opinion as to why they were dissenting. Unfortunately, I cannot. And the reason I cannot is because I was actually phoning in from San Antonio. <laughs> so I was on a speakerphone. Um, I can assure you it was a very robust conversation and took up the majority of the meeting. Um, I, I didn't really get to see who the dissenting votes were, so I couldn't really understand, you know, who they were. But certainly, um, I, I, I can assure you that it was well debated in transportation, and, and what came out was was an acceptable outcome. I, uh, Councilor Baybay. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's very rare that I probably am on this side of a dissenting vote, but I am going to be voting against this. Um, and this is where I think the heart and the mind kind of have conflict. 
And so you go back to experience, and I was on the council when we dealt with this very similar issue with another restaurant that is just up the road. I think it was a um, Japanese restaurant in which a young lady was actually killed as a result of parking mm -hmm. on both sides of the road um, based upon demand at that particular time. And so I think about that as far as um, how should we lead in going forward. So using that mind, I also listen to the comments. And so while I understand that we are in an impasse or a crossroad where development is ahead of zoning, but that is also in an, ahead of the infrastructure investment that's needed for that to be the walkability that we want as part of our comprehensive plan, because I did look at the comprehensive plan, because the applicants or the uh, owners pointed that out, and I thought it was extremely important. But I also went back to the uh, planning board's approval and the fact is, is that the planning board had the same concern, and actually it was mitigated and it was basically told to them that that parking wasn't needed for this business to be successful. And I think that until it is properly planned out and properly invested, uh, totally support the infrastructure that is needed for that and totally support the need that, that, is, that is being kind of asked for. I just don't think it's the right timing I think because of the cautious experience of having been on the board when something happened previously, and I wouldn't want to see that happen again. Other, other comments? <coughs> Councilor Kazan. Yeah, and I can address some of the Councilor's concerns. Uh, we did, again, debate that very thoroughly in transportation, and I think that's where the street lighting came from. Um, it, in recognition of that that section of, of, of street is dark <coughs> for traffic purposes, so not just for <coughs> pedestrian safety, but more in terms of, a, of just driver safety. Um, with the speeds going through there and the nature of the road itself, that um, traffic lighting was probably necessary. Um, not just for this purpose. So I think we will, I think we can address those safety concerns so that we don't have, I mean, you never know, you can't say 100% confidence that this will never happen, um, but certainly I think we're, we're taking adequate steps to, to address those. In terms of the planning board approval, um, that came up as well. Um, there are two separate tra tra traffic studies that are done. Um, the, the traffic study that's done by the development and by the developer, if you will, is for um, access, how many ins and outs and how, how much flow through the property. The police did a different study. They do a, a um, I'm not sure what the name of it is, but it's more of an actual full-blown traffic study with number of vehicles going through and at what speeds, and they calculate how many, you know, what that mean average 80% speed is. That's not part of the development process because I specifically asked that. What's new that we didn't know before during the planning process that's new now? Um, that's a new piece. That, that wasn't made available. Um, so again, transportation I took that under consideration as well and looked at the differences and realizing that um, you know the planning board has always has the discretion to go beyond what the what the requirements are. They could have said we don't agree with you and we expect more parking or we expect a, a better outcome. That wasn't done in this case uh, for whatever the planning board's reasons were. They felt they met the minimum requirements and they accepted that. So I don't want to penalize a business for doing what they were supposed to be doing or what they were asked to do, um, retrospective and retroactively. Safety is the first and foremost concern, and I think we've been able to address that. So. Other comments? Councilor Owen? Yeah, I, I think it, that uh, parking along that section of road is, is um, inherently dangerous. It's a high, high rate of speed, um, certainly with the darkness, with the winter time it's, it is, but it is, um, there's only so much we can do. I mean, I think it would be a horrible tragedy if we had another death, but it's, it's a, um, or an accident there, but it's, there's only there's only so much we can we can do to make everything safe, um, and it's kind of a, a you take, yeah. you're taking a risk when you choose to park there to go to, to go to this restaurant. And if these customers are willing to do it, I don't think we should be stopping them because you know it's it's their choice. Um, I, I guess as I've been listening, I, my mind is going back and forth and changing a little bit. I, I think um, Councilor Babine's comments about the infrastructure and really uh, getting you know that area up to where we wanted it to be um, is a really valid and, and good point and a, uh, something we need to be thinking about. But I also go back to the conversation about the date because um, part of the reason I think uh, having that date in there was so that that could be addressed uh, you know, but we can bring this up again at a future time. I, I'm not uh, apt to not support it because of that, but I think these are all good things for us to be thinking about, and uh, particularly as, it, as other projects will come forward because we know they are coming. So, anyway. Thank you, Councilor Roman. Yeah. So part part of my uh, 
thought around, removing the date was around giving the, the neighbors the assurance that, um, that their safety, when, because they can't move their house. Um, and they want to be able to make a safe turn onto and off of that street. Um, and I, I feel like that doesn't go away in April. Well, um, since day one with this business, I've been very supportive of having this business in that particular area, but I've been, I was concerned about parking on the street just because there's a frequent flyer along that area. I know how bad it can be. Uh, and when they put that double lane and changed it, even I almost missed it once just you know, when they first did it, um, that being said, and it's dark there and whatever. So there are some bigger issues that perhaps we need to be looking at as far as, you know, are we doing the right things when we approve these? Are we to have the right ordinances in place for seating, parking, ratios, and whatever? But that being said, I don't want to see this business penalized because the planning board made the decision that this business can go there. Uh, so as a town, we approved it. So I think that what's happening tonight is a, a good compromise. I absolutely understand what uh, Mr. Babine is saying. Uh, I remember uh, when that accident happened. Um, and But again, you know, uh, these, these business people set up their business. They went through everything they were supposed to do, did everything they were asked to do. Um, and to retroactively go in and just say no, no parking at all, which is frankly what I would prefer, but I don't want to do that because uh, you know I, I I get it. So that's you know we're making the best we can out of a not really good situation at the moment. So. Uh, this is one thing that I wanted to, to talk about, and that was around the one of the other uh, concerns was public works and the snow removal. Um, I, again, I think it's still an issue that, that we'll have to address in the future because it, or, or we'll just have to monitor because it's um, my understanding is we haven't had any parking bans. Uh, we've had a couple of snowstorms, but no parking bans. So it's, <coughs> it'll snow. There'll be cars parked there, and, and getting the snow off the road is going to be a problem. Councilor okay. To that. Uh, I'm going to direct this through the chair to the town manager. Um, I know in Portland, for example, there are certain, they will literally put no parking signs because the police or someone has decided it's dangerous at that particular point in time to do that. So even if there isn't a town-wide parking ban, if it were decided somehow or other, is there a process for that, that temporarily people can't park there because it is? I wondered, uh, I wondered about that. The police department does have the authority to institute temporary no parking. It's really done on case by case. I would not recommend that being a good strategy. No. Um, and no. I can just imagine, uh, given all the other responsibilities that they have, right. uh, paying attention to that would, really shouldn't be added to it. Um, I, just, I want to speak to the issue of the planning board. The planning board made their decision based on the fact that the applicant properly and accurately right. demonstrated the ability to park sufficiently on their site that it, they did not rely, at least from, from the way I understand it, uh, it or uh, portray any parking to be on the street. It's had tremendous success and, and we've seen what has occurred. So I just want to be clear on the fact that uh, there was no reliance and I think the planning board was completely in their right and frankly were required to approve when the applicant is able to demonstrate uh, compliance for all the ordinances on site, which they did, uh, they must approve. And I think that's really what happened. Um, the other issue is just to speak to, we are coincidentally going through a townwide inventory and inspection of our existing street lights. This is in preparation for our upgrade or conversion to LED lights. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the opportunities afforded uh, really is to make sure are all the lights at the appropriate location and we're actually taking some away and adding some uh, really to comply with our own policy. Also the technology affords much uh, better lighting, uh, intensity and color. And so uh, we do have a unique opportunity presented to us, and I assure you this area was uh, an area of focus and will continue to be. And so I think the lighting issue will be addressed as a part of the townwide effort. We've already identified signage. Uh, I think we shared that signage with the uh, transportation committee, so we'll certainly uh, move forward with that should this go forward. Mm -hmm. 
survey back. Yeah, just for clarification, I, I want people to understand that I'm not questioning the planning board's decision. I think that they made a very good decision, and I know that they took into consideration the parking that was approved. Mm -hmm. but what I'm saying, suggesting is that as part of the conversation, they also questioned whether or not there would be overflow parking. And they were told with reliability from the applicant that that would not be needed for the company to be sustainable or to be profitable. And it, what we heard in public comment was that there's a loss of income as a result of possibly getting rid of this parking. Um, so I'm just suggesting is that that isn't the case based upon what the original plan was approved for, is that it should be sustainable, it should be profitable, or at least be able to, whatever the model was for. I'm just, I'm just saying is that that was used. So I, I do not and am not questioning the planning board's decision. I think, I mean, I've been there. It's a great company. I'm just questioning whether this is the safest thing to do for the community. Other comments? Uh, I will support it uh, uh, with some trepidation. Uh, I think more than anything, uh, we're asking our town manager and those who he directs to uh, continue to evaluate it. And if there's any reason to bring it back, that it immediately be brought back for further consideration. Any, any further comment? Uh, main motion uh, as amended. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Uh, order number 17-114, uh, second reading on the request for discontinuance of a portion of Beach Ridge Road. Uh, this has been before us before uh, for a first reading, public hearing, uh, and it involves a piece of property that the state of Maine Department of Transportation has signed off on uh, and had a contiguous piece uh, abandoned uh, last year in front of us. So uh, public comment on, uh, on the matter. Anyone here to speak to this issue? Seeing none, uh, I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. Discussion. Peter, it just is a, and I guess I'll direct this through the, the chair to the town manager. Have we, are there other pieces of property like this? This is like the second or third one that's going to come to us individually. Do we, is there much more inventory of these types of this, this was situations? a fairly unique situation. The state of Maine did acquire right away much more than they needed mm -hmm. to complete the overpass work. Um, I believe there's one other property in this area, uh, further up the road, if you will, that potentially could, um, could <laughs> request. Uh, keep in mind, even after the discontinuance that you've done and the one you're considering this evening, we're still leaving ourselves with, I believe, 150 feet of right away, which is frankly more than we would have otherwise. So uh, I guess to answer your question a little more broadly, I'm not aware that we've done a comprehensive town-wide look to see other irregularities. Um, I think I'd be naive to suggest that there aren't some in a town of 54 square miles. But none to the, uh, I'm not aware of any, I don't believe there would be too many, if any, that would exist to this level. This was really a unique situation. And I think it's a function of the uh, eminent domain laws and they were required to take properties to the lines wherever they existed. Mm -hmm. And clearly they end up taking more property than they need. Thank you. Further mm -hmm. comment? Seeing none, ready to vote. All in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, new business, order 17-123, act on the request to adopt the health reimbursement plans, quote, town of Scarborough, <coughs> Maine, H-A-R-A, -H -R -A, deductible plan, and quote, town of Scarborough, Maine, H-R-A, credit plan. For the town of Scarborough, pursuant to Article 9 of the agreement between the town of Scarborough and the Scarborough Professional Firefighters Association, IAFF, Local 3894, approving a change in medical insurance through the Maine Municipal Employee <coughs> Health Trust. And I'll ask the town manager to begin the yes. introduction of this matter. The uh, town council may remember, with the exception of Councilor Katarina, uh, you ratified the firefighters contract sometime uh, mid-summer, as I recall, six months ago or so. One of the key provisions that we were very pleased to have uh, secured to that collective bargaining process uh, was a change in the health insurance uh, provisions to that mm -hmm. class of employees. Mm -hmm. We really see this as a key 
uh, issue going forward that we intend to bring up in subsequent negotiations with other units. <coughs> As part of that, it gets fairly complicated, uh, but we, we are needing to set up some extra plans to help uh, the town will participate to some level in meeting certain deductible thresholds and such. Um, we have Liam Gallagher here tonight, who's our uh, Human Resources Director, and if the council would permit, I'd love for him to speak to it in a little more detail. Thank you, Liam. If you'd proceed to the podium, that'd be appreciated. Uh, good evening, uh, Liam Gallagher. I'm new to town, the Director of Human Resources, but um, to expand on, on Tom's introduction, um, you know, I don't think that's any secret that, that health care is a hot topic. You know, we continue to see uh, premiums increase year after year. It's one of the more expensive line items for our budget on an annual basis. Um, so the, the, the move that we, we've made through the collective bargaining agreement with the fire group is to adopt a, a high deductible plan um, in order to sort of streamline that change and mitigate the impact of the employee. We've wrapped around a uh, health reimbursement arrangement. Um, Essentially, it's to insulate employees for, for the increased out-of-pocket costs. Uh, it, the, the rationale behind it is essentially the level of self-insurance, um, whereas uh, the predominant plan that all the other groups are enrolled in is, a, is essentially a no-deductible plan. It's a very generous benefit plan, uh, and this is a moving to, uh, again, that level of self-insurance. Um, we anticipate with this change that we are going to see uh, budgetary savings. The actual impact of that varies depending on what the utilization is of the, of the HRA. Um, in making this move in our discussions with Health Trust, they generally quote about a 40% utilization of the HRA exposure. Um, and again, the, the plan that we set up is a very generous benefit. We've essentially agreed to reimburse all of the out-of-pocket expenses uh, that comes through the deductible and the co-insurance for the plan. So, uh, you know, if, if utilized the, the way it's intended, um, on some instances it will actually be better coverage for the employee. So, um, this was not structured as a, uh, as a takeaway to employees. I think it's just a way of uh, being uh, wiser with our, with our benefit options and our, our budgetary dollars. Um, and I think that there's the opportunity for, for a great deal of savings to the town. Um, so that was the methodology behind it. Um, and again, I think it's a, a progressive step in our benefit, benefit plan. So Could you speak to the matter before the council this evening? The actual adoption of the HRA, so uh, this is again, it's, a, <coughs> it's largely a formality. Um, so the, the two plans are structured. We have an HRA set up for deductible uh, expenses, which are deductible and co-insurance expenses. The additional plan is what we call a credit plan. Uh, these are dollars that are going to be deposited to be used similar to a flexible spending account or 125 plan uh, to uh, essentially offset the additional cost with some of the co-pays which are increased under this plan. So office visit co-pays or prescription drug co-pays. Uh, and again, that's, so there's two separate sort of benefits that we agreed to provide the membership. Um, and this is an adoption of those documents so that we can move forward with that change. Uh, questions for Liam? That's no, wrong. And, and we've already agreed to, to make this change to, to the employees. We just have to set these plans up, and for that you need approval. Correct. Other questions? Peter? Yeah, just a quick question. I mean, to kind of get the Council of Rollins point, at one point we did look at this. There was a fairly specific schedule of at least anticipated savings uh, that this generated. And when this was set up in the introduction, is anything, is this just setting up the accounts or is something structurally changed within the initial offering that we approved? So this is, uh, this is authorizing the adoption of the plans. We've agreed to make this change under the collective bargaining agreement. Um, the, the anticipated savings, again, varies. The, the premium difference between the plan that they were in predominantly and this plan is about a 29% reduction. The unknown is what the dollars are we have to commit to that HRA uh, for the utilization. So obviously if, if someone goes to the doctor and just goes for a routine checkup, they're not going to tap into any of those HRA dollars. It's only when they have, I mean, you know this better than I do. <laughs> no, no. I guess, I guess the heart of the question I'm trying to get to, though, is you know, our fiduciary responsibility in a budget 
you know, there was at least a projection of some reasonable guess about savings. Mm -hmm. And I understand it, you know, there's, there's variables in that. But I'm just asking, nothing structurally changed in what we approved versus what you're asking for approval tonight, is that correct? That's correct, that's correct. Now, here's the caveat. Um, when, when we went into, when we initially did this, when we agreed to make this change, we, we had an understanding of what the deductible and coinsurance, essentially the total out-of-pocket exposure was to the employee between those two benefits. That did increase from 2017 to 2018. That was a health trust change. Mm -hmm. So our exposure did effectively increase. Um, so that did cut away at, at the potential savings but even with a 40% utilization, we still would realize the savings on an annualized basis. But to be clear, nothing changed on our part. We contractually agreed to this. We're living up to our end of the bargain. What he's referring to is we get the new rates that come out, and frankly, the other plans have rate increases as well. So um, that is correct. From a budget perspective, you anticipated some of those rate increases for... We did the best we could. But yeah. it's, uh, so, I mean, so there's nothing... Financially, nothing's really changed here. This is just a housekeeping item to set up the account. No, and, and in fact, given the fact that this is a brand new thing, we need <coughs> six months uh, to us both, both the union and us, to set up all these details. This is to be implemented uh, January 1st. So that's really the, the offset in time. We ratified uh, six months ago, and here we are six months in adopting this plan. So, so two questions. Um, I, I seem to recall, and I could be mistaken, it was a while ago we, we, we talked about this in, in, in appointments, and welcome Mr. Gallagher, this is our first introduction, so I, um, I know you weren't present at that meeting, but I recall uh, there being, a, a, I guess, a graduated funding, for lack of a better word, where we would, we would front end load some of it to kind of mitigate those costs, but eventually our contribution to that would taper off and it would be fully employee funded, or was I mistaken with that? And I can speak to a portion of that. So again, the methodology with an HRA is that you know you, you contribute whatever you believe your exposure is. Obviously, mm -hmm. you have to agree to absorb if that goes over what mm -hmm. you anticipate. But from year to year, you're just replenishing essentially your maximum exposure if that's the degree you want to fund it at. So uh, if we did move forward and agree to, to uh, fund an HRA at 100% exposure, which we've been, again, reassured that shows that trend is about 40%, from year to year, our budgetary requirement would be just to replenish that essentially maximum exposure. So if we did 100%, it was only utilized at, at 10%, that next year we just have to replenish that 10% that was missing from year to year. So I, I, I guess that means that we're, we're, this is a benefit that the town will be providing continuously moving forward. It's not just a transition piece as we adopt the new a new style of contract that we're trying to ease that transition. <coughs> this is permanent moving forward. We will right. be funding this this account for them Can, for the foreseeable for this for this contract. For this this contract might be open to negotiation right. for the next round. Absolutely. Okay. This is a, a long okay. relationship. Okay. And just if I could follow up yes. with one one last question. Um, said implementation January one. Uh, is this retroactive for six months? So we're going to have a big lump sum payment going out to, or is it effective January one? That's when everything starts. Back to January 1, that's where everything started. Okay, thank you. That's our own. Yeah, can I, I was just hoping to get a little bit of clarification. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the savings, the anticipated savings is because we've gone to a high insurance, uh, excuse me, high deductible insurance plan, <coughs> and therefore what we're essentially covering with the HRA is the deductible and the coinsurance. Correct. And that's the, the exposure that you're talking about is um, the the anticipated usage of that is, is what you're referring to? Correct. Is what we put in there? And so from, from the, the savings being that, that um, people aren't hitting 100% of their deductibles, they're not hitting 100% of their coinsurance tax. Correct. But there is a maximum limit. It's not that we're exposed, you know, we're not doing self-insurance here beyond, you know, we're, we, for any medical expense, it's up to the employee's um, Correct. Right. Yeah. We are, we're not truly <coughs> self-insuring. We're essentially self-insuring the employee's exposure through the deductible and co-insurance, but yeah. there are stop gaps there. Okay. That's around the real savings to us is the premium difference. The, the yeah. Yeah. employer yeah. portion of mm -hmm. this, this plan is far less than 29%. the, the prior yeah. plan. So that's the fundamental yeah. savings to the town uh, as a way to kind of move to this direction and ease the pain and transition. We've agreed to uh, reduce the employer exposure, and then we're going to have to get some experience in utilization. Uh, we're starting conservative, and with experience, we may be able to dial that back. Sure. Thank you. 
Other questions for the HR director? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any member of the public would like to speak to this uh, order? Seeing none, I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. Uh, comments, questions, discussion, debate? Councilor Carey, something. Yeah, I, I guess I'd just like to make a comment. I, I mean, I want to I uh, um, applaud staff for, for working hard on these uh, employment contracts. Um, no one wants to behoove somebody for making a, a living, um, but we do have a responsibility to make it fair and equitable as possible. So I think this is a good balance between making sure that our employees are well compensated to the level that um, they can expect, um, but also not overly um, gracious to a point where I think we'd be calling the question. So I think it's a good compromise. I think it's a good start, and I, I, I applaud staff for moving in the, a different direction. And, you know, I know it's the beginning, um, but uh, it's a good step forward. I think it's uh, uh, unique that we're discussing <coughs> this um, tonight only because if you look at your main townsman or whatever, I can't remember the official title, um, actually there is a significant uh, discussion in there regarding public safety personnel and the demand for that and the need for a balanced compensation plan that includes benefits such as this where it uh, not only provides your annual salary and income and um, what's, what's nice about it is it's also forcing more companies in the not to call it the real world, but out in the <coughs> public sector uh, to start looking at a more balanced approach as well. So, uh, you know, I commend the staff as well um, in, in taking us forward and welcome to Mr. Gallagher to the clown car. <laughs> and as we have subsequent um, negotiations with other um, bargaining units, our intent was certainly to bring up similar themes yeah. and it's always helpful that you've got to start somewhere. Uh, so that's clearly our long-term strategy. And we have a very capable finance committee that I think uh, has some uh, insurance competency on it that will keep an eye on this for us. At least one. Yeah. <laughs> to the extent that he has yeah. any time. <laughs> but other comments? Get out of the room after that comment. <laughs> Seeing that, I'll call the uh, question. All the opposed? It's unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. Order 17-124, act on the appointment of David Buffard as the assessor for the town of Scarborough, and I'll ask the town manager to introduce this matter. Yes, uh, this is uniquely one of the positions, uh, other than my my position, that the council has appointment authority. Uh, Charter does allow for and require the manager to have day-to-day -day oversight, kind of the administrative oversight of the assessor and um, those functions, but you make the uh, ultimate appointment. I'm very pleased to offer up for your consideration David Buffard, David uh, no stranger to the town, he actually was assistant assessor for about six years and has spent the last 10 years or so with Maine Revenue Service. Yeah. Uh, counselors were able to meet him uh, earlier this evening actually. And Sue Russo is his uh, deputy assessor, someone that you know as well, lots of great institutional knowledge, so I really see them as a, uh, as a tag team, that's kind of what they call themselves, which is a really comforting thing. Uh, what's important about that is I've struggled harder this time than ever in my professional career to uh, to find a competent person for this <laughs> position. It's a challenging field. Um, it, apparently folks in that field are aging and uh, I don't expect uh, either of those things are going to change and so to the extent that we can build internal talent and be ready for the next stage is really what it's all about. So I'm very pleased to offer up David uh, for your consideration. Good. Uh, public comment. Anyone wishing to speak to this, please approach the podium. None. Uh, accept the motion. Who approval? Second. Second. Discussion. Uh, welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> Glad to have him. Met him tonight. Yeah. Other comment? Uh, no, very capable gentleman. Uh, Tom's been looking for a long time. This is uh, welcome news to get fully staffed back in our assessing department. Uh, we're going to be busy down there. And I should note, um, I don't know how long he's going to be here, no, no commitments, but we've already had two meetings with preparing a 24 and a 36 month plan. We've got a lot of big issues in front of us and we really need to get our arms around them some of which may have budgetary implications for funding revaluations and such. So uh, we have hit the ground running and uh, want to take full use of the time we have. Further comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, Order 17-125, Act to authorize the town manager to sign documents authorizing acceptance of $1,695 or any portion thereof to be placed in the asset forfeiture account. This money is the police department's equitable share for its contribution to the investigation of criminal cases in Alaska the town manager. Yes, this case um, involved uh, our personnel. Uh, it was a, a multi-jurisdictional effort um, involving DEA, Old Orchard Beach. Um, it was actually an event that happened here in town, which sometimes uh, it doesn't happen in Scarborough, but we do participate. Uh, as the chair mentioned, uh, this is our so-called equitable share. This is a case from 2012. Uh, and um, the restrictions on these monies is that they cannot supplant your operations expense. They're really intended to supplement. Uh, and on occasion, uh, there's been all sorts of things that I don't think the police department would dare otherwise to ask for taxpayer <laughs> support um, that, that uh, these monies are used for. So uh, it does require council action to accept them. Uh, public, anyone uh, wishing to address this, please approach the podium. None. Accept the motion. So moved. Second. Discussion. It's always nice to take money in versus sending it out. Yeah, <laughs> quite so. All in favor? Opposed? Mm -hmm. Unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> uh, order 17 126, act on the request to establish the <coughs> multimodal reserve account pursuant to the provisions of Title 30A, Sections 5801 and 5802 of the main revised statutes as amended and supplemented to date. I'll ask the town manager to introduce this matter. Yes, this matter came to my attention just last week. Uh, the Gateway Commons project, that's the apartment project up on Higgins Parkway. Uh, the planning board negotiated a payment of $10,000 toward transit. Mm. Uh, they didn't know what they wanted. The applicant wasn't sure how to use it, so they simply agreed to make payment. And frankly, we're still not sure. And so the question is, what do we do with these funds to put them in a safe spot? A dedicated spot so they're available to put into use when the time is, uh, is deemed right. Um, as part of that conversation, it broadened a bit. On some occasions, the planning board will also receive <coughs> funds for installation of sidewalk in the future. There are occasions when, and actually, Nunsat Brewery was an example of that. Um, they paid a, a sum for a sidewalk. It doesn't make sense to build it until we know what we want to do on either side of it, part of that road section. So. Forgive the planning speak, uh, multimodal. We thought we'd broaden the reserve account to kind of be broad enough to be a reserve account to deposit these kinds of funds mm -hmm. that we don't have an immediate use for. We want to earmark and dedicate for future use. Uh, it's not unlike the housing, um, affordable housing funds that we receive. So I appreciate your consideration. Public comment. Uh, seeing none. Close public comment. Uh, accept the motion. So moved. Second. Discussion. Councilor Gazo. Um, so a, a couple quick questions. I, I, I appreciate the intent, and I, I'm, I'm all for it. Um, I, I just a couple of quick questions. Is this like a kind of a sweep account where it just kind of gets put in there? And uh, my, my, I guess my, my concern would be, if it's a sweep account and limited, limited use, um, we define those limited use. Because could this go for transportation? Like for paving, or or is it limited to you know intermodal transportation like bus stops, sidewalks in this instance where it's a restricted use account that's got ten thousand for buses, let's say, and eight thousand for sidewalks. Uh, the name, the intent was to have it specific to non-vehicular, mm -hmm. multimodal. I, 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 it's my understanding of that term. Uh, I suppose in the broadest sense that could multimodal does include vehicles as well. The one assurance I can give you is you need to create the reserve account and you control it, you spend it. So any use of those funds comes back to you. So whether it's this or future council will decide is that use appropriate. Uh, I think we, these are not impact fees per se. Okay. So we don't necessarily have, have to demonstrate direct um, use of funds for the intended collective purpose, but I, I think we should endeavor to do that whenever we can. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure we weren't restricted like a, 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 an impact fee where we have to use it. Meaning, meaning if it goes in there, it has to be for, um, it has to be for a certain kind of transportation and we, we don't have flexibility to use it for. These would otherwise have been provided on site, yeah. but for reasons unique to these yeah. projects, it didn't make sense for that work to occur right now. Yeah. So um, I don't, I would not consider them as 
uh, impact fees or kind of voluntary negotiated contributions. Uh, is there a review by the Finance Committee of reserve accounts so as to not inadvertently have monies uh, set aside and restricted which sit there without attention being paid to their purpose and use? Yeah. Peter, yeah, uh, there, is, there is kind of a review process, and we don't go into a greater detail, but we do ask about some of them, the balance of the funds, and what the intent is. So, yes. Good. Good. Thank you. Yeah, and I just want to be clear. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not suggesting that we we you know restrict this or not. I just want to know what mm -hmm. if if this is going to be a restricted fund balance. What the restrictions are before it wasn't clear in the wording that we would only be able to use it for certain things. So I'm happy that we have some flexibility with it. I think that's helpful and that gives us certainly as finance gives us a little bit more leeway into. To uh, unlike traffic impact fees, which we have multiple reserve accounts that are specific to certain areas, right. and there are very clear restrictions on use of those funds. Yes. Uh, based on statute. I, I don't think we have those same requirements and should give ourselves a bit of flexibility, but also use it as close to the intended purpose as possible. Yeah. Sure. Other comments? Uh, ready to vote. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. And let's thank you. <coughs> uh, Act on the uh, this order number 17-127. Act on the council chair appointments for council standing committee and committee liaison. Uh, that's been posted on the uh, agenda packet. So, public comment. Anyone wishing to comment, please approach. Seeing none, I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. Thank you. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Good. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, no non action items. Uh, the act on the council uh, standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. Chris will start down here with you. Uh, so, long range planning met at the library uh, last week, and it was kind of a, uh, a, a, a I don't say special meeting, but we, we met with the, the um, um, Commons. You know, the crossroads, crossroads the development group. They they came and uh, made an introduction. Um, so um, uh, uh, Rocky Rispero was there. Dan Bacon, the former town planner, was there as well as as their lead consultant. Um, it was a very positive introduction. Um, very surface, very 50,000 foot. Um, obviously, there's still some work to be done, and I know they're they're looking um, at coming in front of us <coughs> as well and making formal introductions. But I, I thought it was a very positive. Very positive meeting. Um, not a lot to share because there, there's nothing really in the workshop. They still have to close on the property. All that stuff has to take place. But um, I think we're, you know, it's as I said in the past, it's a great opportunity for for the town and a great opportunity for them. Uh, the the repairs and the issues have, have formed a, a consortium, if you will. Um, so I know they'll be for us fairly quickly. Um, and um, um, and we also looked at. Um, some changes or some modifications to the Higgins Beach um, uh, Higgins Beach character code. Uh, we discussed that in, in pretty pretty uh, pretty detailed um, nuances, and I think that will be before the council fairly shortly as well for our action as well. So, Peter, yeah, two two, two kind of quick updates. Last Thursday night, the, the town council finance committee met, and we actually reviewed some of the refunding bond proposals that we've had conversations at this table on. It was a riveting conversation, as you can imagine, <laughs> to talk about the bond schedules. Um, we did. The market is changing all the time, and as we found out, we are going to definitely move forward on the bond offering for um, the public safety building. But now I am unclear. Some of our refunding was dependent upon what happened to the tax mm, cool. bill code. Yeah. Um, it looks like it has gone through. I don't know if you know the detail yet about whether it prevented us refunding, but it sounded like as it was drafted, it was going to. So we'll update you on that. Um, and then this week, the Joint Finance Committees met along with both the Board of Education and Town Council Communications Committees. So we really had kind of a, a full, full slate. And what we really talked about is you know, trying to figure out what we might be able to do differently this year to get more engagement in our community around the budget issues and some other things and just there'll be more details coming. 
but from a high level, what we kind of settled on was doing something really different from prior years, which um, town staff will be announcing and running joint listening or listening sessions, I think four of them during January and February, where they're going to have just an open invitation for anybody to come in and share their thoughts, concerns about the budget or any hot issues about the budget, and the intent is to just listen to what our community says and then factor that into our process as we start the budget process. And then on the back end of the budgets, we've decided that in lieu of the budget forum that we've done the last couple years, which is a pretty structured environment where we've had fewer and fewer people actually show up and there really isn't sort of an interaction, we're going to try what we call, we're kind of tabling them for now, traveling road shows, but really the thought is to couple a uh, town council member, so we'll be talking to all of you, um, with one board of education member and, go, and we've selected about seven, the, the theory is about seven different sessions throughout the town. We'll try to go to different locations. That's when we have the budget sort of once it's been presented so we can present it to the audience and then be open for questions and discussions about some of those things. We anticipate that we're going to have to have some of those conversations, as I alluded to earlier in the evening, about um, what do we want to do as a community, what some of the trade-offs are going to be with, with tax rates versus some of the services in the town. And so we're looking for, we're hoping that that engages our community in a different way. Um, and then I think we also got, uh, we, we've heard comments in the past that our web pages have not been very user-friendly for folks that want to look at the 460 pages of the budget or whatever, whatever <laughs> it is. Um, so it's been a lot of work and I think you're going to really like it. We've really tried to simplify the budget presentation on a web so it's really easy to just go to an icon and click on it. So we talked about a whole communication strategy that might be different than what we've done in prior years and everybody was on board and we we're hoping that will create a difference and I think the ask will be of town council members, we're going to have like a little sign up sheet so anybody that's interested in pairing with a t uh, board of education member will travel, have a traveling road show around the budget. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yes, well, uh, thank you. Councilor Gettering. Uh, yeah, um, I did attend the Senior Advisory Committee, uh, Senior Program Advisory Board, um, and the exciting thing that I know uh, Mr. Cayazzo, uh will be like to hear is they definitely want to do the student liaison. Um, it's going to take a bit of process, so it's going to come to the council just so we have to alter, you know, who <coughs> and whatnot. So we have started that process uh, with that committee. Um, great discussions uh, about you know moving forward. Uh, we're planning on potentially doing a, a show on community TV um, geared towards seniors that actually would combine really well with all sorts of different topics. You know the budget and what does public works do and just about the services available in town. And even though it's going to be geared towards seniors, so to speak. I think it would be helpful in, in educating the public in general about a lot of topics that are out there and where the tax dollars go. Um, <clears throat> the next meeting of that advisory board for those who are interested is January the 16th. It is early in the morning. 8.15 in the morning and it's in the town manager's conference room. And then the other thing I just wanted to mention real quickly is uh, thank you uh, for nominating me, I guess, as chair of board and communications, but that's okay. I did jump on it and managed to uh, grab, the ordinance will meet the third Thursday of every month at 4.30, and communications will meet the second Thursday at 5.30. That's a million dollar question. <laughs> so um, just uh, so people will know, and that will start in January. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor um, Foley. I did attend the joint town council, board of education, communications uh, kind of forum the other evening, and uh, just have to say I was really pleased and impressed with the thoughts and the plans going forward. Um, I know there was a lot of uh, consternation around the committee that I had proposed, but the truth is that a lot of those ideas and, and what I was really hoping to get at kind of came out in what they're looking to do and, and uh, maybe from a little different perspective I was hoping to get more citizen involvement and take some of the load of work off of 
us who are already so busy, but I, I think uh, I'm excited about the approach and I hope uh, I can be helpful in it and uh, help move that forward. So that was, that was great. Um, that's it. Great, thank you. Councilor Rowan. I have nothing. Councilor Beba. I uh, just want to mention as chair of the appointments committee, we will be having our meeting on the first Monday every month. Um, ex at 5.30 p.m. in the Time Managers Conference Room, except for the month of January, in which we'll have that on the 15th, because uh, the first Monday is New Year's Day. And I did want to mention um, regarding cable TV, I was, um, uh, I'll be the liaison to the cable TV committee, which actually has been dysfunctioned um, <laughs> over the last several years, but it is an official committee that has already been approved and is in the manual. So I think it's exciting that the Senior Programs Committee has already started talking about the direction. I really hope that um, I would love to hear from citizens about the quality of services that they see, um, especially given the recent investment um, in this room around technology, but what they are seeing at home and um, have some ideas. So uh, we'll be getting to work and forming that committee because there is nobody else on it right now, <laughs> but um, I will get to work on it. At least you know it will be unanimous. Yes, I love those committees. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I attended the Long Range Planning Committee meeting last week. Uh, the uh, Scarborough Downs presentation was its exciting. Uh, these are great people uh, who are buying the property. Uh, they've got some consultants who are very uh, supportive of our community. Uh, we are planning a workshop uh, with uh, the Scarborough Downs people uh, with the, the town council for January 10th. Third. 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 First meeting in January. Yes, the third. The uh, Higgins Beach Character Code matter was before the Long Range Planning Committee. That was, uh, there is a stretch of Higgins Beach from Spurling <coughs> uh, uh, Road to the parking lot, where, which was uh, developed well after the cottages at Higgins Beach were developed, and it has always been R4, conventional R4 zoning, which much of the residential areas of the town is zoned. Uh, it was subsumed within the Higgins Beach character code, but yet it doesn't really match up at all with what was uh, being attempted to be achieved with that zoning. So uh, an effort is now underway by the planning department to contact all of those people and have a dialogue with them leading up to a review by the Long Range Planning Committee uh, uh, for a potential rezoning and then a decision will be made whether that goes to ordinance or whether it just comes directly to the, uh, to the town council. Uh, <laughs> uh, town Manager's report. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to expand on a couple of points I mentioned earlier. We are uh, fully involved in the LED streetlight conversion project. We select a consultant. We actually have a separate consultant kind of, uh, this gets very highly technical, so we have a separate consulting uh, assisting us, kind of an owner's rep, uh, not costing us much money at all, but his input is invaluable. And, uh, it's already proved his work just getting to this stage, but uh, last night I know there was a crew of staff that actually toured a number of locations in town to really uh, better appreciate um, lighting uh, deficiencies or in some cases we get more lighting than we need. Pleasant Hill Road is an example. You could probably land a, an airplane on that road. There's so much lighting. So um, the other part of their excursion was to go into Portland. Portland actually has live demonstrations. There's three different locations in Portland and so they're able like, with their consultants to see different fixture types. And that's exactly at the phase we're at, is to select the fixtures, uh, and there's a myriad of choices. Um, the good news is staff, the ones they like, were all the cheapest ones. Uh, they didn't know that going in, but it, sometimes it works out that way. Uh, I know the Energy Committee is uh, tied into this project, and they'll continue to be as, as it moves forward. Um, I mentioned earlier that with the new assessor on board, I'm able to advance some things that I've been thinking about for months now um, and really the revaluation has, has been looming and we really need to get a plan to move this forward. Yeah. So that's clearly front and center as part of our conversations and we're actually exploring whether there's an option to advance uh, parts of the revals uh, on its own. Commercial industrial base is unique and separate and I think it's certainly a, not inappropriate to look at um, 
different ways to approach this. So we're exploring that and we'll report uh, more in, in the coming weeks and months. Today, um, I attended a meeting with DOT. Um, I had previously promised to keep it quiet, but I can't contain myself. Um, <laughs> this meeting was to discuss the Eastern Trail and the Close the Gap project. And I'm pleased to report that we have DOT's concurrence that uh, they've closed the gap for us. Wow. So that project is... Uh, <laughs> We won't tell anybody, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow, it's huge. That is, yeah, it's yeah. huge. The commissioner himself was part of the meeting, uh, very, wow. very supportive. And um, cool. so our, we're going to get back together <coughs> tomorrow to get things back on track. So uh, I'll be able to update you more in yeah. terms of timing, but we need to get through final design, which I think we can accomplish within the next several months. I expect we'll be moving dirt this construction season, nice. probably continuing through the, through the winter. Mr. So. Kelly, you need to put your pen down. How much was the gap? It was about well, 500000 at the end. Wow. And, uh, the reality is, in spite of our efforts and really our success with local fundraising, yeah. we've, we've had a really phenomenal mm -hmm. um, yeah. experience. With cost escalation, we're barely covering the annual cost increases. You know, the $4 mm -hmm. million dollar project increases by 10% oh, yeah. year over year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our fundraising can't even fill that gap, much yeah. less yeah. the fundamental gap. So. It was persuasive, he was very supportive, so very pleased with that. Uh, Councilor Donovan and I uh, did convene a meeting of the parties for Avenue 2. I think he reported out those results to the members of council. From my perspective as kind of facilitator or moderator, uh, I felt as though all parties uh, came with an open mind. Uh, we agreed on the list of kind of issues uh, up front, and I think we left with a resolution to all of those. So we've actually redrafted documents. They're right now being circulated. Um, we may need to look for a, a slight tabling to allow all parties to be present. Um, so it may be a February matter that you ultimately take this matter up. But our intent is to deliver a final detail that all parties can live with. And I think, uh, at least verbally, we left that meeting with that understanding. So that was a very good outcome. And lastly, just the holiday schedule here at the Town Hall uh, with Christmas and New Year's on Monday. Of course, those will uh, be holidays and Town Hall closed, but otherwise we're open for business. Thank you. Uh, I, I did neglect to report on the Energy Committee meeting uh, last week. <coughs> uh, the LED replacement was very much on the table. The, the Energy Committee really has taken a, a real leadership role uh, in pressing forward with this LED conversion program uh, and has just been incredibly benefiting from the sustainability coordinator and her high competency and her ability and the DPW director's ability to work together. Uh, and so the project has moved forward uh, wonderfully. Uh, the Energy Committee also uh, dealt with the silver bullet drop-offs that are at the Veterans Home, Walmart and Hannaford. Uh, the Hannaford one has been removed. It has proven to be a real challenge to uh, the DPW department to keep inappropriate materials from showing up at those three sites. And they visit them twice a day. Uh, so uh, I would ask the public to realize that it is a recycling center, just like uh, you would have normal recycling rules. Uh, cardboard's a popular one because it doesn't fit so nicely in our buckets. Uh, but that is, it, it's very, very important that we respect for these three properties, now two properties, that, uh, that the rules that are posted right there uh, be followed. Um, so uh, we are on to council member comments. Councilor Bailey. Thank you. Um, just a couple of items. First is um, I did want to um, mention um, that I listened very closely, particularly with Mr. Green, David Green's comments around the working waterfront. Um, I was actually part of the council and was a big part of the delegation that um, I don't know. I don't want to say we. I don't know whether we influenced them or not, but we worked with Senator at that time. It was Senator Bartlett, <laughs> Governor Baldacci, and House Speaker uh, Pingree to receive funding. I think the town invested initially about $210,000, dollars and leveraged almost $2 million that was given to us by the state to make that working waterfront and to rebuild that dock 
um, and to put it in the crane. So I would like to ask that, um, given um, his comments, I'd like to know what those concerns are um, and what, um, you know, what has been the progress since that, because it was a very important, it was one of the last projects that was actually funded by the Working Waterfront uh, Fund. And so I'd like to kind of understand what his concerns are and have the town kind of report back to us. I, I guess it's community services that manages that for us. No, I'm probably the one that's best equipped. I, I yeah, I mean, I however you think project. it's appropriate. And then I was, uh, I'm intimately familiar with the covenant uh, that, that exists. Uh, suffice to say, I, I personally and professionally don't necessarily agree with Mr. Green's yeah. concerns, but I'll provide a report. And I have a feeling that there may be ancillary issues around the working waterfront rather than with the working waterfront itself. But if you could, I, I would still like to understand yeah, that, and I think we should know. It was a big investment, especially from the state. Yeah. And then last, I wanted to mention on a congratula uh, congratulatory basis, if you did not see, uh, Scarborough Red Storm running back Owen Garand was nominated, mm -hmm. the first Scarborough High School uh, student nominated for the 47th Patrick Award uh, for football players. And so I want to wish him and his family luck. Um, I actually worked with somebody that was a nominee many years ago from a different community and he said it's pretty exciting. And um, I think that uh, um, Mr. Grant should hopefully be a top contender based upon how they performed this past year. But it's really, really exciting because actually all three, if I remember correctly, all three of the candidates, one's from Wells and I can't remember the other one, if it's Kennebunk or, but all three are actually the schools are the fir are first time nominees. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really exciting for these new schools and especially for Scarborough. So. Um, I hope everyone gives him a congratulations and just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Thank you. I will uh, reiterate the sentiment of wishing everyone a Merry Christmas. <laughs> and I will add Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> That's the gathering. Well, I thank you for being short and sweet. My daughter arrived home from Chicago an hour ago and I'm dying to see her. I haven't seen her since August. So <coughs> Merry Christmas, Happy Festivus to the rest of us. Happy holidays to everyone, and I'm looking forward to an exciting year. And with that, I'll, I'll kind of echo happy holidays, but I do want to call attention, talking about holidays, and actually this is kind of personal, but for folks that, that kind of, I'm sure you kind of saw it, but Scarborough hosted the Reefs Across America, and two comments, and it was really, really well done. Actually, the organizers of the event that have been with Reefs Across America in different <coughs> communities from here to D.C., said that they thought that what happened here in Scarborough was one of the best events that they have attended. So it's a pretty high mark. Mm -hmm. Kudos to everybody that participated. They had the middle schoolers all lined up mm -hmm. on the exit out. And then on a personal note, I actually had my father-in-law, um, he brought three buddies, three, three veterans, and he was just thrilled. The veterans were just, they, mm -hmm. big smiles. They, they couldn't have been more happy about the reception and the recognition that they got. So kudos to the community. Great job. Hopefully this puts Scarborough on the map to maybe be a stop for them in the coming years. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I will just say Mr. Garand was also won a Gatorade uh, oh, State, no, State Gatorade uh, Player of the, of the, of the Week. So um, clearly uh, a bright future for, yep. the, for, for that young gentleman as well. Um, uh, I'll keep it brief. Uh, happy Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Everything. <laughs> um, looking forward to starting the, uh, the the new assignments and uh, getting to work. Sure. And I'm told that uh, Mr. Garad has made a very intelligent decision to go to Dartmouth. Oh, nice. My understanding. Nice to see you. Uh, we're going to repeat uh, what we did two years ago. We had a retreat, a town council retreat. Uh, it was very successful. It was run by <coughs> two Scarborough residents, uh, Dana Morris-Jones and Judge Shorb, uh, a real team-building build exercise. We're planning it for January 10th, and it'll be posted as would any town council meeting. Uh, we have... Uh, 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 Oh, the last item I wanted to say was uh, uh, best wishes to Judy Roy, who has been convalescing. Uh, she is one of Scarborough's uh, great citizens, uh, uh, tremendous community contributor, and I wish her all the best at this holiday season to get well soon, and she looks like she's on the mend. So Good. Uh, um, with that, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Oh, did you? Hey, cool. <laughs> I told Molly. <laughs>